Hello, good morning. Welcome to all the Destiny Travelers out there. My name is Sherry Downs. Thank you for joining me. I want to empower you while you're in route. As you come in, go ahead and share this video. Like it. Let me know you are watching and where you're watching from. I'm excited about this season and all of what God is saying and all of what God is doing within the body of Christ and within the earth at large. Oftentimes we get in the mix of, I'm going to use that term, in the mix of what the world is doing, but we fail to exalt and magnify what the kingdom of God is doing. So many times within the body of Christ, we look at what is happening in culture. We look at what the world's systems are propagating and what the world's systems are dictating um, to the world. We know that the enemy is the uh, ruler of the systems of this world. And we know that as believers, the scripture tells us that we are strangers and foreigners passing through. So we have to begin to take a kingdom approach to what we are witnessing, the things that are manifesting, the things that are changing, what's coming out in the open. These things are to be expected because the Bible tells us that the days are going to get more evil. So let us not be shaken or let us not be thrown off at what the enemy is doing within the world system because this is what the world does. We can't get mad because the world is doing what the world should be doing. What we need to be doing as believers within the body of Christ is to begin to push the kingdom agenda in every sphere of influence that we occupy, whether that is in education, whether that is in agriculture, begin to rise up and manifest as God's sons and daughters who rule and reign in the earth, that the kingdom of God can be highlighted, that the kingdom of God can be glorified, that the kingdom of God can advance in the earth. And we can see the manifestation of the kingdom. We won't have to be an underground system. We won't have to be a hush hush system, but the kingdom of God can rise up and those sons and daughters within the kingdom can step into their sphere of influence, full of power and full of the spirit. So don't be shaken by the things that you see manifesting. I saw reports about Target and all of these stores that are um, highlighting um, just the different things that um, agendas of the enemy, um, doing away with sexual pre uh, sexual um, uh, boundaries and uh, sexual norms. They are bringing in all of these ungodly um, labels and all of these things just to propagate what the enemy um, wants to manifest in the earth. And so let us as kingdom minded individuals not get caught up so much in those things, but we need to become focused on the will of God for the kingdom of God advancing in the earth. We already know what the enemy's plan is. We already know he is a defeated foe. So let us not get so um, conspiracy minded. Let us not get so um, wowed and shocked and um, overtaken by what the world is doing and what the world should be doing because it's the world system. What we need to focus on is our assignment, what God is doing through us and as the scripture says, the earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. So we have to become that more vigilant so that God can manifest himself so that the glory of God can be seen through us and that we can rise up and become rulers and reigners within the world system. So we can be a city set upon a hill that cannot be hit. I want to empower you while you're in route.
You are a destiny traveler. You are someone that God has sent to the earth on assignment. He redeemed you so that his glory can be revealed through you. And God wants you to manifest who he is to the systems of the world, to the body of Christ, to those who are lost, to those who are in prison, to those who are held oppressed, those who are held captive by the enemy. He wants to shine through you so that his glory can be on display and the earth will know what it looks like to be surrendered to a holy God. God manifests himself through his sons and daughters. God reveals himself through those who will walk with him, through the lives of those who will surrender to him, through the lives of those who will lay down their natural lives and lose that life for the life that is hid in Christ Jesus. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining. As you come in, go ahead and share this feed. Invite somebody on. Let me know that you are watching, what your name is, where you are watching from. So today I want to speak to you concerning how do I delight in the Lord? Oftentimes you hear, especially if you're in the culture of church your whole life, you can really become desensitized to the will of God. You can come desens you, you can become desensitized to the presence of God, to the things of God, because you are around this culture, because you are um, acclimated to the culture, because you have been in it your whole life. So it is like a way of life, but not in the context of in the spirit. Type in the comments, you got to live in the spirit. So God wants us to become sons and daughters who not just become culturized or become habitual church attenders, or it becomes just a country club to us. The, the things of God, the body of Christ, our church attendance. God wants us to rise up and become those who manifest the glory of God in the earth. You are designed and you were redeemed to manifest God's glory. But in order to manifest God's glory, we have to become ones who live in the spirit. Paul was encouraging the Galatians to not fall back to the law, not fall back to their carnal nature, not fall back to um, their old ways of living within the context of um, living according to the law. But he told them to keep in step with the spirit. And sometimes we can be so, become so acclimated and so um, desensitized to really learning how to live in the spirit because church becomes just a carnal thing. It becomes an event. It becomes a, um, a way of life. We habitually do it, not really realizing the significance of the believers coming together, empowering one another, equipping one another to go out into the systems of the world and infect change. But here it is, Dr. Neal, we have to become sons and daughters who live in the spirit, who manifest the will of God in every sphere of influence, whether that is parenting, agriculture, education, uh, entertainment. You have to become one that is not moved by what the systems of this world is doing. You have to become a son and daughter who is willing to delight yourself in the Lord so that his glory can manifest in your life. We don't get to the point of ruling and reigning with God without delighting ourselves in the Lord. We have to learn how to take pleasure in God. We have to learn how to become kingdom minded and kingdom focused and submit everything unto God's great vision. God has a vision 
for humanity. And when we are redeemed by the blood of the lamb and the cross of Christ or through the blood of the lamb and the cross of Christ, we then are able to step inside God's great vision and cooperate with the great mission, which is the commission. Go into the hedges and the highways, go into the places, the marketplace, go into the internet, go into the business sphere, go into agriculture, go into entertainment, go into the places where the people are and compel them to come unto me. How do we compel them? We compel them by the life that we live. Type in the comments. It's the life that I live. It's the life that you live in the glory of God that is manifested. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is the manifestation of God's nature. That is his glory. When we become ones who can manifest the nature of Christ, who can manifest the sevenfold spirit of God, we become ones that are a light shining in the darkness. That's what God wants. He doesn't want us to be wowed by what the world is doing because the world is supposed to do it. Stores are not kingdom. So they're going to sell demonic paraphernalia. They're going to sell witchcraft stuff. They're going to sell all these things because that's the world's way. And that's the world system. It's all about the mighty dollar. It doesn't matter morals and all of those things don't matter. So let us not be a deer caught in headlights. When we see these things manifested, it's what the Bible speaks of. It's, it's what is supposed to happen. So you have to focus, I have to focus on becoming a son and daughter who can manifest. The Bible says the earth is groaning for this. The earth is travailing. The sons and daughters of God to manifest in the earth. What are we manifesting? The fullness of God's nature, the fullness of his power, the fullness of his presence in a body, just as Jesus did. Type in the comments, I will manifest. God wants to take our lives and literally lift us up to the degree that we become a beacon of light, to the degree that we become a manifestation. We become a, a signpost. We become a city so large. He wants to set us on a hill. He doesn't want to hide us. He wants to take us. He said a city. This, how, this is how large God wants to make his sons and daughters. He wants to create a city out of you. He wants you to have land. He wants you to have buildings. He wants you to have ownership. He wants you to have property. He says, I want my sons and daughters to be a city. Come on, type in the comments. I will manifest. Come on, a city set on a hill that cannot be Hid. Listen, you can hide a whole lot, but you can't hide a whole city. A city involves territory. A city involves ownership. A city involves property. A city involves keys. Come on. God wants to create a city out of you. A city has families inside of it. A city has stores inside of it. A city has everything it needs to thrive. A city has municipality. A city has order and structures. So God wants to take each one of us from the place of being low, from the place of being in the world and being uh, conform to the world, but he wants to take you and lift your life to the degree that everybody knows you're there. Everybody knows that you have been established in the earth. He wants you to be a city set upon a hill. Now, hills are a high place. He wants to take you and lift you to a high place so that you cannot be hid. My God, a lot of people talk about, um, uh, sons and daughters being um, lifted to a high place. If, if God is saying you will be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid, you're not supposed to be hiding. You're supposed to be shining and people are supposed to be looking to you. People are supposed to be seeing the glory of God on your life. People are supposed to see you as a beacon, as a place to look to, as a refuge. Come on. God wants to take our lives and lift us to the degree 
that his glory is undeniable, that his glory cannot be denied, that the presence of God cannot be uh, shut out, that the presence of God on an individual's life uh, attracts commerce. The presence of God on an individual lives attracts the world system because they are a city. They are established in the earth. God wants to establish us in the earth to the degree that it just carries on into eternity as we are rulers. Come on, as we are rulers with Christ Jesus in the new millennium. He wants to take our lives and lift us up right now, not in the afterlife, not in the life to come. He wants to do it right now. Type in the comments, it's for now. And a lot of people take a low road and feel like the kingdom of God is supposed to just be this underground place. No, God wants to establish his sons and daughters in the earth. Jesus didn't die just for us to go through this life and live underneath the radar. He died so that we can live in an abundant life. He died so that we can have life to the full, so that we can be lifted up into the systems of the world to show forth the glory of God. He died so that his sons and daughters can have access to what God originally intended for humanity, for us to be reconciled back to God and for us to get to the place where we don't have to toil. Let me tell you something. I believe that when you get to a place in God, there is no toil. Jesus, there is no toil. To toil is underneath the curse. To toil is underneath the curse. The curse of Adam was that the ground would not yield to him without a toil. That was the curse of Adam. But when you get to a place in God where he is manifesting his glory, where his light is shining through you, where uh, you are a city set on a hill, I believe we have gotten to a place where there's no toil. Fish just jump in your boat. Come on. Come on, you get stuff just easily. It easily comes to you. It easily flows to you. There is an ease upon your business. There is an ease upon your ministry. There is an ease that your family is walking in. Things just come to you. You just walk into blessings. You just walk into miracles. You just walk into provision. People just give unto you. They give unto your bosom. That is the place of manifestation. Type in the comments, I must manifest. To in order order to manifest, we have to first learn how do I delight in the Lord? You don't get to this place of manifesting without taking pleasure in God. We often quote scriptures, but we often real uh, forget to realize that there are guidelines within the scriptures. Type in the comments, there are guidelines. If there are guidelines for the promises of God. There are guidelines for the scripture. We just can't pick out a scripture and then just think that scripture is supposed to manifest for us. We have to align ourselves with the full counsel of God. We have to align ourselves with the will of God. Type in the comments, I must get in alignment. So within the guidelines of scripture, we find ourselves and we check off, God, I did that. I'm doing that. The Holy Spirit is manifest. And we're not doing this according to the works. We are uh, uh, vetting ourselves and examining our lives to see if our lives are in alignment with what God is saying, to see where the enemy has got us in error, where the enemy may have uh, blinded our eyes according to truths where our lives are in full alignment with God's divine plan. Type in the comments, there is a divine plan. There is a divine plan for you and there is a divine plan for me. There's a divine plan that God already had in his mind concerning Dr. Neal. There was already a divine plan that God had in his mind concerning Isa, concerning Priscilla, concerning Christina. There was already a divine plan 
plan. So we must understand and get in alignment with God's divine plan. Lord, what is your divine plan for me? What was in your mind when you sent me into the earth? What have you locked on the inside of my vessel from eternity? Eternity is in my heart. God says he has placed eternity within our hearts. So everything that we need, everything that we are supposed to manifest, everything that we are supposed to do is already inside us. We have to keep growing and delighting ourselves in the Lord to the degree that the Holy Scriptures begin to manifest in our lives as we delight, as we align, as we posture our lives according to God's divine plan. Psalms 37, 4 through, through, 4 through 5 says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall, here it is, give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. We have to learn how to delight. How do we delight ourselves in God? Delight is to take pleasure in, to find pleasure in, to find satisfaction in. So when we delight in God, we're finding pleasure in him. We're finding satisfaction in him. We're finding our place of fulfillment in God. We're finding our place of rest in God. We're finding our place of fulfillment and encouragement. Everything that we need is in him. When we learn to delight in him, we're finding our pleasure. We're finding our substance. We're finding our our, 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 our push. We're finding our motivation. We're finding what strengthens us, what gives us joy when we take satisfaction in God. When something gives you pleasure, you want to keep indulging in it over and over and over again. That's a guilty pleasure, as they say, because I love to do this above everything else, because I will put down everything else to delight in God, to have pleasure in him. I will for, forsake going to the mall to have pleasure in him. I'll forsake going on trips to steal away with him. What is your pleasure in? What is your delight in? What are you finding that satisfaction in? A lot of times I, I, I often hear people say, you know, you're so heavenly, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Well, Enoch began to be so heavenly minded that God found so much pleasure and Enoch. And Enoch found pleasure in God to the degree that God wanted to have him with him early. He wanted to bring Enoch home because he found so much pleasure in Enoch. Enoch walked with God in such a way that God's pleasure was upon him. God wanted him to be with him because he pleased the Lord so much. He delighted in God so much. We are supposed to become sons and daughters that manifest, but we cannot get there without delighting in the Lord. The scripture, Psalms 37 says, delight, commit, Trust and watch him do it. Mm. Type that in the comments. Delight, commit, trust, and watch him do it. Oftentimes people will read the uh, that scripture, but they'll say, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. But there's, a, uh, there's attachments to that. <laughs> so we got to also commit our way. We can't delight ourselves in the Lord and then be like, okay, God, I want you to start giving me all the things that, I want, right? When we delight ourselves to the Lord, we are committing our ways on to him. We're saying, Lord, I give you the authority. I give you the control to chart my path. I give you the permission. I give you my permission. I lay down my will, my desires, my culture, my parenting, my a uh, uh, preconceived notion about my life, my unfiltered dreams. I give those to you, Father. I commit everything about my life unto your path. 
Whatever path that you have laid out for me, I'm committing my ways, my character, my dealings, my encounters. I'm committing that all into your hands so that you can have full control. We have to be willing to give God full control. Type in the comments, I give you control of my life. We have to learn when we're delighting in God, he's going to start giving us what to desire. He's going to start giving us what to desire. Type in the comments, give me what to desire. God will give you what to desire. Where are these desires coming from? Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts. I know the plans I have for you. Sayeth the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope, a future, and an expected end. So when we learn to delight in God, when we learn to commit our ways, he's going to start giving us what to desire. He's going to start giving us what's in, what, what is in his mind. He's going to start unlocking eternity that is on the inside of you. He's going to start revealing the gifts that he already preordained before the foundation of the world. He's going to start unlocking the works that he wants you to do. What are the works that he's want? The deeds, the action steps, what, what business you are supposed to build, what books you're supposed to write. All of those things are locked on the inside of you. The ordained plans and works of God that have already been pre-established before the foundations of the world. He's going to start putting those things in your heart. He's going to start awakening those things, making those things come alive. He's going to start watering that seed that is within you. So those desires start to bubble up. So those desires to start to be unlocked and unveiled so that you can become one that manifests God's glory. How do we manifest God's glory? We watch him do it. We don't manifest God's glory as we take uh, um, uh, our thoughts, our ideas and try to bring them into manifestation. We manifest God's glory as we watch him do it. Type in the comments, watch him do it. So we have to watch God partner with the Lord through obedience to watch him organically bring about his will. I always like to look at Abraham and Sarah. This is a perfect example of them not watching God do it, but them trying to take in their own mind and move before God prematurely and making something happen that God never told them that was going to happen. Let me tell you something. God is a wise God. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows our action steps. He knows the way that we take. When we commit our ways to him, when we delight in him, when we trust in him, he's going to be the one that manifests his will. He's going to be the one that organically brings it to pass. All we have to do is stay close to his, his chest. All we have to do is stay close to him to hear what he's saying, to hear the blueprints, to hear our steps of obedience, to hear the things that we need to do to partner with him. Abraham and Sarah, he says, Abraham, you're going to have a baby. Sarah's going to bring forth the baby, but they got in their mind. Well, maybe this, maybe that they started looking at the world's ways. They started looking at what the doctors say, the physicians say, they started looking at the biology. They started looking at all of these worldly statistics and they begin to say, well, let's try to help God out and do it this way in their thoughts, in their minds. They wanted to move prior to God because when you are waiting for God to organically do it, that may take patience having its work in you. And we don't like to be patient. We don't like to wait on God. We don't like to let the process take its course. We don't like for everything to be now ready and in its proper place and proper alignment and all things to be in alignment and order and all people that need to be a part of the move of God to be in place. Sometimes we have to just sit and wait upon God and listen for his instructions and obey 
everything that he says. So as we begin to do that, we'll begin to see an unfolding organically. We'll begin to see God bring the right people. We'll begin to see God bring the right uh, um, uh, resources to manifest the fullness of his will in our lives. So how do we delight in the Lord? We delight in the Lord by getting to know him. We have to become intimately acquainted with the God of our salvation. We have to become more intimately acquainted with the God of our salvation. We have to begin to study him. We have to begin to know his character. We have to look in the scriptures and find out about God, read about God ask questions about God, read about other accounts of how individuals walk with God. We have to begin to be a God smart. How do I become God smart? I need to read about him. I need to study him. I need to know him. I need to spend time with him. I need to dialogue with him. I need to draw closer to him. If we draw closer to him, he's going to draw closer to us. That's just how it goes. So when we spend time with him, we get to know who he is. We get to um, dialogue with him and share our innermost secrets with him, our innermost longings. We have to take interest in him. And when we delight in the Lord, we're taking pleasure in him. Our interest is in God. So many people have interest in so many different things, but God, they're not concerned about God. They don't think about God from Monday to Saturday. They only put God on their mind Saturday and Sunday. They have no interest in God. They have no interest in talking about God. Their conversations are not about God. They're not interested in what's on God's mind. They're not interested in what God is up to. They're not interested in how God is going to manifest in this hour. They're not interested in how God, they don't have an interest in him. So many times people are like, well, there's other things to talk about but God and I, I, I have been one to always talk about God. It's just something that has always been a part of my life, that I've always had interest in the things of God. I've always had interested interest in who God is, what God is doing. So when you delight in him and take pleasure in him, you have interest in God. You are interested in the things that are on his heart. You are interested in what he's going to do in society. You are interested in what he's going to do in the world. You are interested in his plans. How is God going to perform? What is on your mind, God? What's next, God? You're interested in the God that we serve. So, so many people have their interest. And I'm not saying you can't enjoy things of the world because he wants us to have an abundant life. But those things are in joy as we also have interest in him. If, if, if you uh, believe that, or if you receive that type, amen. So we need to take interest in God. We need to talk about him, think about him, prioritize our relationship with him. Look forward to being with him. When we do these things, we are showing delight in the Lord. When we do these things, we are showing that we have an interest in the things of God, who God is, the kingdom of God. So we commit our doings unto him, our path, our plan, life's results we commit unto God. It is through the Holy Spirit that all of this is accomplished. It's not by works. It's not you checking off of a list. It's by you yielding yourself and saying, Lord, I commit my ways unto you. It's about you humbling yourself to the degree to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, I want to be your vessel. Lord, I want to be a, a vessel that delights in you. Lord, I want to walk with you intimately and closely to manifest as a son and daughter. Lord, I want the Holy Spirit to accomplish your will in my life. No. So when the Holy Spirit comes in us, the Holy Spirit is the one, the power behind the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the one that works in you both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. Everything comes to us through Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is our intercessor. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our Lord, but the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our guide. He leads us and guides us into all truth. He is the one that is manifesting the will of the Trinity. He is the power behind the three. He is the power that's hovering over the waters. He is the power that came upon Mary and caused her to give birth or to conceive a seed. He is the power that brings forth the will of God through a vessel. He is the power that heals. He is the power that delivers. He is the power that set free through the Holy Spirit. So when we have the Holy Spirit of promise, our lives should become in alignment, in oneness with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So then when our lives become in full alignment, we become ones that are submitted to God's great vision. The Holy Spirit in our lives is there to accomplish God's will. And if we're not ever thinking on him, if we don't have interest on him, if we're not talking about him, why is the Holy Spirit there? You got to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. You got to give him a life that is committed. You have to give him a life that is laid down to bring forth the manifestation of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal the father. But if we don't prioritize our relationship, there's nothing to reveal. If we don't look forward to being with him, there's nothing to uh, manifest to us. So it's the Holy Spirit that's going to manifest the will of the father through us. So Matthew 6 and 11 says this, give us this day our daily bread. There is something that I recently uh, learned about bread. Jackie Hill Perry uh, eloquently laid it out and gave us an example of bread and how bread satisfies, how bread fills us up, how bread expands on the inside of us. When we eat bread, sometimes we don't have room for anything else because we have filled our bellies with bread and our bellies are the place of satisfaction and our bellies are the place where the spirit of God is, where our spirit man is. So it's also important important that our bellies are filled with Jesus Christ because he says in Matthew 6 and 11, give us today when we pray to the father, our daily bread. Matthew 4 and 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we see an analogy between bread and the word of God bread and Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life, Jesus declared. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So when we are ones who delight in God, he becomes the one that fills us, that satisfies us, that interests us, that we talk about, that we want to spend time with, that we want to be intimately acquainted with. He is the one that fills us till we overflow. He expands on the inside of us when we have him as our daily provision, as our daily substance, as our daily satisfaction, as our daily pleasure. You won't go seeking love in all the wrong places. You won't go building businesses and trying to be satisfied in things that don't. You won't have an orphan spirit. You won't have an orphan mindset. You won't get angry when people reject you because you know you are accepted in God. When you live with him as he is your substance. He is your daily bread. He is your satisfaction. He is your hiding place. I'll never go hungry in relationships because he is my relationship. Because in him I live, move, and have my being. I'll never grow uh, 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 feel abandoned in him because he said, when your ma mother and father forsake you, I, the Lord, will take you on. I'll never feel like an orphan when it comes to him, when I'm in him, when I find my satisfaction, my pleasure, my delight in him. 
We need to understand this. He is everything we need. I'll never feel a loss because in him I am found. I'll never feel out of out of sync because in him I live, move, and have my being. I'll never feel hopeless because I can always hope in him. I'll never feel depressed because he is my joy. He is my delight when I take pleasure in him. I won't feel out of sorts. I won't feel crazy in my mind like I'm losing my mind because I have the mind of Christ when I delight in him. When we see believers that are out of out of sorts and out of order. And even when we go through trouble, trials, tribulations, the Bible says when the enemy comes in and then it says like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts the standard. You shouldn't go under when you come against trials and testing. You shouldn't be, uh, uh, we shouldn't have believers killing themselves when they are delighting in God. Listen, I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. All we can do as the fivefold giftings is to give you the recipe, but you have to put in the work. Type in the comments. Now is the time. The time is now, saith the Lord, to rise up and manifest as his sons and daughters. The time is now, saith the Lord, to delight in the Father. The time is now, saith the Lord, to yield to the Son. The time is now, saith the Lord, to partner with the Spirit. Now is the time to come to him. Now is the time while the blood is running warm in your veins. Now is the time while you're hearing this message. Now is the time to become interested in God. Now is the time to commit your way unto the Lord. Now is the time to lose your life, to find it. Now is the time to step into more. Now is the time to ask him to unveil his desires, his thoughts, his plans, his intentions for you before the foundations of the world. Now is the time to ask him to unveil and unlock and uh, bring alive the seed that he placed in you before eternity in Jesus name. So we have to become ones that not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The words that proceed out of the mouth of God is the logos, the rhema, and the prophetic. The logos, the rhema, and the prophetic. I'll say that again. The logos, the rhema, and the prophetic. We have to become ones that walk in the spirit. It's not according to how you feel. It's not according to what you see. It's not according to what is happening in the natural. You have to begin to take this thing by the spirit. You have to begin to see this thing in the spirit. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry, saith the Lord. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is your provision. Jesus is your satisfaction. I hear a lot of people say, well, I won't be satisfied until I do this. I won't. Be. They have a bucket list. They have uh, I want to climb this ladder. I want to become Dr. So-and-so. I want to become this. They have all of these earthly aspirations that are not filtered in committing their way unto the Lord. They want to, uh, and I'm not saying those things are bad, but what I am saying is, has God authorized that for your life? Are you, that, are you doing that thing to receive validation? Are you doing that thing to be accepted? Are you doing that thing to prove something to man? Or are you doing it out of faith because God said, I prepared this for you before the foundations of the world. Now go to school and become a doctor. Are you doing it out of faith and by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God? We have to begin to be ones that hear God's voice and follow him. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. How do I get to know the voice of the shepherd? He trains me to hear him. He speaks to me. He gives me the same command over and over again so that I learn his voice. I learn how to follow. I spend time with him. So when he is the one that is speaking to us, he ultimately, ultimately becomes the one that satisfies us because the shepherd did everything for the sheep. The shepherd led the sheep into green pastures so that they were satisfied, so that they were uh, filled. God wants to fulfill 
and give you, here it is, your deepest longings. The thing that you can't let go of, the thing that keeps, keeps coming up, the thing that you keep feeling drawn to. Maybe I should go to school for this. Maybe I should start doing this. Maybe I should start a channel. Maybe I should write a book. Maybe I should go uh, be an entrepreneur. Maybe I should sell this. Maybe I should start this. Maybe I should go here. That longing, that deep uh, need and, and, and thing that keeps coming up in your life. It is the thing that can make you feel fulfilled in God because that is a longing or a desire that he placed there that you maybe haven't realized that it's just not you. It's just not your idea. It's just not something you thought of in your own mind. That is a God ordained idea, but because of how things look on the outside, we fail to step into those moments with God. We fail to partner with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can manifest the desires of God in our lives. When we tell the Lord, Lord, I commit my way to you, he'll start giving you what to desire. It is the Holy Spirit that manifests those desires because he brings it to pass. All we have to do is become ones that are possessed by him and yield to him. When we become possessed by God, it is him living, moving through us to accomplish the will of the father. God's will is to raise sons and daughters in the earth to highlight them, to set them on high so that the world can see who he is, so that the world can see what he can do through a life laid down. Bread expands in you. God wants to expand in you. Bread satisfies hunger. Bread satisfies, you know, sometimes when you eat a lot of bread, you don't want to eat anything else. Sometimes when I have a meal, if it's a lot of bread attached to it, I'm like, oh, I'm so full. You can't even eat the rest of your meal. And sometimes when you're at a restaurant, they'll bring you bread first. I know like at country, uh, what is it? Cracker Barrel and um, <laughs> what is it? Olive Garden and several other restaurants. They'll bring you bread first. So if you full, fill up on that bread, sometimes you got to stop yourself because you know if you eat all that bread, you're not going to get to the good stuff. You're not going to get to the good part of the meal because you filled up on bread. But here Jesus has given an analogy of himself as bread. Bread satisfies. Bread fills. Bread expands. Bread rises. So we need to be ones that commit our way and delight in the Lord so that he can satisfy us, so that he can give us the desires of our hearts when we take pleasure in the Lord. His desires become our desires. They start to give us what to desire. And it is the Holy Spirit that gives you that deep desire to do this thing, to accomplish this thing. And when you yield to God, you become passionate. You become possessed by it to the degree you want to see it manifest. There is no great greater pleasure. You get pleasure when you manifest. You get pleasure when you fully obey. You get pleasure when the will of God, not only do you get pleasure, but the triune God is, is pleased because it takes faith to do those things which he places in your heart. God will start to download his vision and his plans his blueprints, blueprints, his strategy and his purposes in our lives so that we become sons and daughters who manifest in the earth. Now is the time to manifest as a light in darkness and a city set on a hill which cannot be hid. Thank you guys for joining. I look forward to Friday so we can finish this off. I'm gonna stop here so that I can share the rest of this message with you. Um, because we're going to go a little bit deeper into manifesting or um, delighting in the Lord to the degree that we are able to then be a light and an intercessor in the lives of others. We have to first do it in our life. Then God will take us into a place where we can do it for others. God wants us to rise up and rule and reign in the earth 
as his sons and daughters. If you're looking for books, coaching, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. You can find all of uh, resources there, um, books on prayer, all of those things you can find at my website. I thank you guys for joining. Thank you for following, liking. Um, thank you for joining this live stream. Thank you for being a destiny traveler while in route. Thank you for your time. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that God's blessings will be upon you. And you heard this message in the spirit that it was given. I pray that the Holy Spirit would empower you and ignite you to delight in the Lord. In Jesus name.